So hello everybody, how are you today? My name is Ruth Pesale from Kerbal.com and in today's video I'm going to show you what my default settings are for Power BI both for new files when I do new reports but also the settings that I have, the global settings that get supplied all the time, okay? So let's begin by opening Power BI I have tried to, to reset the settings so you can see what the actual experience is. For example, I have custom connectors. I have quite a few, as you can see. And um, if you have not checked the certified connection connectors uh, box, you will get this message. I'll show you how to disable in case you're using it too. And then I have not signed in, so it's asking me to sign in. Here is the thing, use a trick. If you don't have a sign in and you haven't done it yet, it, what you can do is you go here, already have a Power BI, and then you close it and it disappears and you don't have to sign in. Okay? And then a new pop up shows with this. And you close that too. And now, after three pop ups, and you, sometimes if it is the first time you download the Power BI, it will pop up something with, oh, check, this is new QA, something. <laughs> so get rid of all the pop ups. And now we have a clean Power BI file. So what do I do? I go to get data and then I go to uh, do, 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 blank query, connect. Because the first thing I do always on a new one is to add a calendar. Here's the thing. Let me paste this. The chances that you won't, will not need a custom calendar or, or you know a calendar is very 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 low and this is a mistake i did in the beginning i say oh i don't need a calendar and guess what halfway there i start to need a calendar and then i have to redo the entire thing always a calendar i won't make that mistake again and the calendar is ready there because you might not need time intelligence now, but you need it in the future, period. It has to go. So I create a calendar. Now, this is a tedious process. And here's the thing. You might say, okay, you could actually have a Power BI file with a calendar on. I did. I had that. I had it with a template. So every time I wanted to create a new project, click, click, and then ding, ding, ding. Here's the issue. I, depending on who I'm working with, the calendar has to be in a different language, it has to be a physical calendar, it has to be like a custom calendar 455 or 544, you know, all those types of calendars, or it has to be in Spanish, or it has a physical calendar that starts in September, and my lord, you always need to change it. And I found that it is... It takes for me longer to modify something than to have like a basic calendar and just transform it as needed. Because if I, okay, this works for me, okay? But you can, if you always use the same calendar, save it as a template and then you are done. <laughs> but for me, I don't have that luxury, unfortunately. So you give it a good name. Give good names to your files, to your tables, okay? And you probably wonder what a good name is. I have a video on naming conventions. So just search naming conventions, Kerbal, something will pop up. Okay, we're going to connect also with a table with some data, okay? So we don't have just the calendar. And we're going to go to the Northwind database that we always use and we're going to connect with the orders table. We have it here, okay. And now it's going to load. So, here's the thing. You Do you see this order date, required date, ship date? More often than not, things are stored in daytime format, even though they are not daytime. As you can see here, you have a date, but the, the time is always 12. So one of the things that I would love for Power BI is to actually have these. If it says that there is no time difference in time, just get rid of it and con 
you know, change it to t date because not a lot of people know that this is not a good, you know, date times are not such, it, it just consume a lot of memory. So it, it, it's harder to read also if it has a date time. So I would love for converting those to date automatically. And then you can actively say, okay, no, I want to have date time. And that would be less often, my opinion. But I'm going to show you something else before. So we have these. We're going to load it into Power BI. Close and apply. And it's going to go fast. It's not a big model at all. Let's see. The technical relationships. Look what happened. <laughs> when it comes to date, the default date format is like this. And that is horrible who can read that i mean if you have it in one line fine but when you have it in a date table i have to always go here and change it to something that makes sense so something that you can actually read you know with your eyes and because i work with you know customers all over the world the date format changes so sometimes it is date month year or is month, date, year, or is it? so I have to put it in a format that I can actually read it and I can see, okay, this is American format and this is, and then change it. I wish for a date to come like this by default. You know, a format that you can see what the actual format is. But let me show you. So do you remember these three or the dates? So, because I, I change it back. This it comes in a quite okay format, but obviously because I removed the date time, you know, the date and put it in date time, this is what we get. So if we go back, look what happens. If we go back to edit queries, orders, and then I say, okay, I want to have this as date. It will change it to date. We click close and apply. And it's loading. Come on, come on, come on. And boom. And you cannot control clicking here. No, 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 no. I have to go one by one and then do that change. Boom, boom, boom. So I go one and then I take the next one. And then I take the next one. And now I have all in the date format that I understand. Okay. Next, go to the calendar. I just imported a calendar, right? So I, there is a lot of things that we need to do with this calendar. The first one, day, year, month number, fiscal year, they are all numbers. Yes, they are numbers. And yes, I want it with, as numbers because I want them to sort correctly. But my friends, I don't want to summarize them. So I have to go again. You can control, you cannot control click. So I go year, don't summarize, month number, don't summarize, fiscal year, don't summarize. I got fiscal month, don't summarize, day, don't summarize. I got quarter number, don't summarize. I go fiscal quarter, don't summarize. I go, yeah. Okay. So, next thing, you know, I have these sort columns is to be able to sort text in the right order for a calendar. So I go to fiscal quarter, sort column, fiscal quarter. I got year month, sort column, year month. I got, you see, and then I have these sorting columns. And I want to hide them. So again, no control click. So you go there and you go there and you say do, 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 hide. And then you go there and you go there and you hide. And then you go there and you hide one by one. So we are nine minutes into the video and we haven't done anything yet. Well, it's not over. It's not over yet. Let's go. Okay. Next step. I have a calendar. If you have a calendar, which you should have, you go to home. No, you go to modeling. Mark as date table. You go in there. You select date from the calendar. Validate it. Okay. Boom. 
Okay. Next thing I do. Do you see all these things? So every time you have a date in Power BI, what happens is it creates a hierarchy. Not good. Not good at all. And I have received files where the, hier the fields in the hierarchy have been used. And then it is a mess to change that. Uh, so this is what I do. I go to File. I go to Options and Settings, Options, and then do, 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 do. on the data load, you remove out of date and time and look, gone. There is no temptation to use them anymore because they are not there. So if you want to use dates, you go to Calendar. You go to Calendar and I hide the dates that should not be there that will not be used. So they, they're not used. Okay. So what else I do more? Let's go. For every file, then we will go through the global settings. But for each file, you go here. And the relationships and the detection, I always leave them on, to be honest. But then, depending on the data source, I remove them. Okay, so if I have to, I remove them. If not, please stay there. Don't mind. Allow, allow data preview to download in the background. If you find a Power Query file is slow, disable this. And regional settings, sometimes, you know, because I get files from all over the world, sometimes I have to go in here and fix, very rare that it fix anything, so I normally let it be, whatever it is. I have, as a default, English on mine. I think it works best when you're working with different files from different countries. When it comes to privacy levels, this is a tough one, because I would love to say to you, ignore the privacy levels and potentially improve performance go with that because everything will go work and you will get no error here's the thing the reason why privacy levels exist and is there is because when you are combining different data sources it could be that data from your data source gets leaked to a public source and you don't want that okay so you have to have it. I, my recommendation is get it as combined because you get, will get a warning and then you have the possibility to decide for yourself. Is this data public? Maybe it is public, but you have stored it yourself. Or maybe it's not, you can have it anyway because it is a, a territory of the country and that is public data either way. So you can make a, a decision about if your data, the risks of if that data gets leaked. Okay, Ho hopefully I explain myself. Auto recovery, direct query, uh, query reduction, I have nothing there. This is basically for if you have like a lot of data and you don't want every filter to filter all the tables and you know, you want to have a little more dynamic table, uh, Power BI file. Report settings, here you I go wild. <laughs> So, don't allow the use to set filters. No, I never take that. Hide visual header. Sometimes I do, depending on if it is a dashboard, you know, explanatory report or exploratory report. So, if it is an explanatory report, hide the visual header is always a good, it's often a good solution. Otherwise, I don't click it. Use the modern visual header for sure. Change the default from cross highlights into cross filter for sure. And then, uh, allow the users, I leave it as summarize, and then enable the filter pane. This comes by default nowadays, so which is a good thing. So that's it. <laughs> and we're 14 minutes into the video. Oh Lord. Okay. Um, now let's go through the global settings so you can see what I have. For data load, I leave it as series. Power Query Editor, these two, I have it on for sure. Direct Query, nothing, our scripting, there that you have obviously I don't have Python on so that's why you see only R and on Python you see my R and Python video right <laughs> okay so native database queries this is a little bit the same as with privacy levels um, I have it on I, I, I have it on because what is this native da native database queries it is basically 
you know, when you are importing data, for example, from an SQL database, and you are using your own SQL statement, you could, you know, normally you do select blah, blah, blah from table, blah, blah. No harm in there. But what happens if you say alter, delete, you know, there are certain commands that are allowed and they will be executed in the source when using native database queries and it could give you trouble, okay? So that's why there is a warning. And I have it on because I wanna know. I wanna know if something is going to affect the query back in the background and I wanna check it before it actually happens. So I have it always on. If you're just using internal files, take it off, okay? So it depends, it depends on what you do. Um, data extensions, not recommended. You remember the first pop-up that I had on custom connectors? Not recommended. That thing disappears and you can use your custom connectors. Otherwise, you are not able to use them. Custom visuals, I have disabled the security warning, but you should definitely have it on, okay? I think you should be, if you're a Power BI administrator, your user should be informed that they are using an external source and probably they will not know what the risks are but hopefully they will ask you if it was like that okay uh, i didn't use argus map so don't have it on privacies we talked about that combine updates yes tell me when there is an update send usage data i don't have it by default but i send it diagnostic i don't use it to be honest i haven't had any needs to go there and tinker with it probably I should do a video preview features these are the preview features i have enabled i don't have spanish q a i don't have live connect q a and i don't have python auto recovery oh my god you have no idea how many times this thing has saved me and i do control i it just it is a tick that I have, control S, control, like save, save, save. And I do it very often, you know? So, I don't know, every five minutes or something, I just control save. But sometimes things happen that you don't do it. You get a call or whatever, and this will save your life. So it says auto uh, store information every minutes. You choose how many, and then keep the last file. if. My computer, you know, my computer crashes all the time. Bad day, three times. Good day, zero times. But every other day. <laughs> so this has helped me a lot of time. And then you have the report settings. This is the smart guides, you know, when you are aligning things. So it is uh, by default. And I don't have the accessibility one. Um, my wish for the settings on Power BI will be that because there are settings on current files that are not available in global and that's not good. I think that all settings that are on current files you will should be on global too, not the other way around, obviously, but definitely all the current file settings should be on global, especially out of date time. A pain, a pain. I, I absolutely hate this feature. It just makes <laughs> me nuts. So I hate is a hard word, but I don't like it. Allow data preview. Okay, you might not have problems. You might have, but if you know what you're doing, you, you will probably disable it. So that should be, definitely be there. And when it comes to here, I have cross highlighting should be there. And the filter pane is ticked by default, so it's like a global setting either way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, 20 minutes. Mm. So those are my default Power BI settings. Um, what are your settings? What do you think? Tell me, tell me. Have I missed anything that is important? Probably. Let me know in the comment box. I hope you find this useful and uh, maybe you can adopt my morning routines with Power BI, okay? So I'll see you again on Friday with the Tax Friday's video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.